On today's Switch to Linux, we are going to talk about the process of upgrading an end-of-life Linux Mint 20.3 Cinnamon Edition up to a Linux Mint 21. Now, this is a bigger upgrade than simply going a 21.1 to a 21.2, which is usually found in the Update Manager, and I believe it's under the Edit, and there will be an extra option that tells you to upgrade. In this case, this is a major upgrade. We're changing the entire Ubuntu package base, and you do need to make sure that everything is, uh, is set and running. Now, the average user might want to have snapshots set up. I personally don't use time shift and snapshots. So um, I'm going to advise you if you're new to Linux to do that. I'm going to skip that particular step here just because I don't usually use them. I have all of my data backed up on this computer. If there happens to be a failure, well, I'll just go ahead and reinstall Linux and dump everything back on and that will not be a problem for me. I also have fairly high confidence that this update is going to work, but hey, you never know. This is an operating system that has already jumped two system, uh, two different uh, hard disks and an entirely different piece of hardware. So you never know. This started with a Linux Mint on a Dell on an i5, uh, I think 5300U on a spinning Rust. We upgraded it to a... Uh, to a, um, a Maxter internal drive, and then we upgraded it from that to an SSD, and then we migrated it over to an MSI i7 computer. It's on now. Hey, this Linux Mint install has been around for a while. Let's just go ahead and see how long I can keep her going. <laughs> now, um, a couple steps you're going to want to do. First, make sure everything is up to date. And I came in here and I updated everything there. And I even came into Flatpak and I made sure everything was up to date under Flatpak. Um, oh, of course there's new updates to Flatpak. I only did that 10 minutes ago. Thanks, Flat Arch. Anyway, that's done. <laughs> Okay, flat packs are now up to date again. The next thing you're going to want to do is have a look over at your software sources. So the software sources tells your computer where the software repositories are coming from. You can see here I'm pulling my Ubuntu base from Princeton. I'm pulling my main from Linux Mint. Now you also have to check PPAs and other repositories. I usually run the PPA for KeePass XC. This allows me to have the latest version of KeePass. Uh, even the last I knew, I think the versions even in Ubuntu now do not support pass keys. So I run the PPA to have the absolute latest KeePass XC since it's such an integral part of what I do. You might also check other repositories. There shouldn't be really anything else in any of these that you need to do. So just be aware, I went ahead and turned off that PPA and pushed that software package back to where it is. Now, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a package. You can install it from the software center, but you have to search for it. It's the same way. The package is called Mint Upgrade. So you would do a sudo apt install Mint Upgrade. Now, I already have this installed so as I go to install this it's going to tell me I already have the latest version so this has to be run as sudo so I'm going to do a sudo mint upgrade and this is going to walk us through the steps that we need to do to run our Linux mint so what we're going to do here we're going to press let's go and before we start I'm going to click on this hamburger menu up to preferences. By default, it does require you to have a time shift snapshot. I'm going to turn that off in my instance. I would advise a newer Linux user to keep that turned on. That is the time shift application over here, which allows you to run a full system restore point. So if there happens to be a uh, one of these old restore points, there's an error in this, it will allow you to restore the system. In my case, I'm not going to run that personally. Um, that will not change how this works other than the fact you can turn it off and I like that option because in my case, if I have a problem with this, I'll just reinstall it. I'm not losing anything. I will emphasize once again, do not proceed until you have a backup of everything on your computer. And I do. So that's what we're going to do here. 
You can look at applied software updates. You can look at supported Linux Mint versions. So we're going to keep everything else there. And it looks like I actually closed my application. So let's just go ahead and run that again. All right, so let's go. We're going to start our preparation, and this is going to run an apt cache in the background. This is going to test that everything is going to be working. It's right now, it's testing everything on the current Ubuntu version, and then it's going to do a simulated test of what it's going to look like upgrading to the next package base, which is going to move, uh, in this case, from an older Ubuntu LTS to a newer Ubuntu LTS. So we will see what this looks like. Now, I will also say at the outset that uh, this process will potentially take several hours. It needs to get a lot of software, and it needs to do a lot of other things checks and things like that so plan yourself some time but it's not like you all have to sit in front of the computer obviously this video is not hours and hours long because I'm skipping all of the waits all right so here the, you can see that the key pass version the official version is 2.4 I have installed version 2.7 and uh, that's because we had that PPA I thought that was downgraded but apparently it is not so I'm gonna hit the fix option and this will go back and restore back to the older version of KeePass XC, which it needs to do in order to upgrade it. Of course, as a final step, I will come in here, I will turn that PPA back on for KeePass XC, and I will then proceed to um, I will then proceed to upgrade and get the latest version again. Here are various orphan packages. So all of these various orphan packages, um, here are the things that are in this list. BR scan, this is my brother's scanner, which is actually locked in my storage unit. The Epson scanner is the workforce uh, scanner. I've done some videos on that, uh, and I'm okay if those get removed. And uh, I'm actually the new version of the Mint scan tool actually does a better job. I can, of course, reinstall all those if I need to. These ones here, the HLL 2380DW, these are also for the same brother printer that is attached to that scanner. That's not the printer I have with me. And of course, my only key software will be removed. And I will have to probably reinstall the only key software. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'll just go ahead and install it next time we need to do this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, keep these. So let's see, these do not exist in repositories. If you decide to uninstall them, hit check again after their removal, or we can just click OK to continue. So I could stop here. I could uninstall these things. And uh, in this case, I'm not going to. We're just going to go ahead and run it. Now it's going to do a simulated download. It's going to now point the repositories, and then it's going to run a series of tests. This will be a part that could take a little bit, so it's going to simulation and download. So it's going to uh, change your repository list, or at least it's going to simulate changing them. We'll push OK, and then we're going to go ahead and let this guy run. So I'm going to pause the video here while this runs, and we will come back for the next step. So it has completed the simulation, and it will give us a list of added packages. It's going to give us a list of removed packages. And so the simulation upgrade will be performed following these changes. That we're going to download just about four gigabytes of data. It's going to use about three and a half gigabytes more space. And we're going to be deleting 21 packages, adding 485, and upgrading 200, uh, 2,765. We'll go ahead and push OK, and now it's actually going to download these. So this is here where you can, this is going to be a part that's going to take quite a while. Uh, also, depending on your internet speed, fortunately, I have really good internet speed where I am right here. So uh, it will not take me a long time to download all this, but this is a process that will take some time. So we'll pause the video again here, and then we will come back when this is done. So phase two finished. I wasn't watching the clock, but uh, you can go back and see how long that took. And uh, we are going to click this button. It's going to begin with the next phase, which is upgrading all of the software from what we have just downloaded. So depending on your internet speed this and the, the specs of your system, this could take more or less time. So this being an i7, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. It shouldn't take too, too long, but there are a lot of packages. So we'll come back for the next step. We got down to a point here, and it says there's an, an 
error. It says zero packages still need to be updated, zero kept, zero deleted, issue is detected. I'm just kind of looking over what we got here. That's kind of reminiscent of the type of issues I've seen before where the boot sector filled up. Let me have a look at that. That's it right there. See, free space, zero bytes. Look at that. So we actually had an error because a Linux kernel didn't get itself updated because the boot space ran out. That is a that could potentially lead to a devastating system. So I'm going to look at the images I have here. I have a 515. I have a 539. I'm going to see which Linux version I'm currently running. Let's pull up our system info here. I'm running the 515 139. So that is this one here. So there were some old Linux kernels here that uh, weren't removed. So maybe one of those first steps is should we remove some of those first Linux kernels. I'm going to go ahead and manually delete 5.4. I'm pretty sure that is not going to be needed. So we're going to grab everything related to 5.4 here. And I might actually have to do this as root. Let me, yeah, I can't delete those. So I'm going to have to open here as root. And we're going to find everything related to 5.4. And there should be, I think, four files here related to 5.4. And you can see that that's 130 megabytes selected. We're going to delete those. Now, 134 could probably also be deleted. Those are old kernels. Let me free up some more space. I'm going to get rid of the 134 since we're running on the 139. Ooh. Let me do that again. It's the 134, 134, 134, 134. We're going to delete those. Okay, so now we'll see what we can do here. Let's go and check again. So that was an error that was caused by, uh, and, and this is, a, I, uh, if you this error happens and you reboot your system, you're going to have a non-bootable system. And I corrected this on a video where we looked at fixing the uh, fixing a Linux build when um, uh, when you run out of space in this boot sector. This is one of those limitations of Linux Mint where occasionally it tends to uh, fill itself up for some reason. And uh, and I'm not sure if it's every Linux system or just if you are encrypting your Linux system. So um, just be aware of that. So this should resolve this issue. So we're going to go ahead and let it go through. It's going to go back to the last check that it worked through, and it's going to hopefully fix itself. So the fix for this would have been uh, maybe something I, I didn't just didn't even think of it. You should have gone through the in the update manager and go under your Linux kernels and remove all of the Linux kernels that you're not actively using. That's probably what you might want to do. So doing that, we're just going to come back and see if that resolves it. We're going to let this phase run itself again, and I will be back when we have a next status update to do. All right, so it tells me that the successful has been upgraded. So that's all I did is I just went through and I manually deleted the old kernels that uh, uh, that I knew I wasn't using. You can see that added the new kernel there. And so now we will go ahead and reboot and see if this works. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a whirl. Here we are. We have restarted the computer. And you can see that now we are on Linux Mint 21. Our Cinnamon version is now 5.4. Linux kernel, we're now running at 6.8. Now, I did want to show you here as well that uh, now that we are on Linux Mint 21, this is where you can do a minor upgrade going into the Update Manager. Tells you your system is up to date. And under the Edit menu, there is now an upgrade to Linux Mint 21.3. And since we've gone this far, we're just going to go ahead and 
do that too. And then I'm just going to hold this computer at 21.3 while my other Linux Mint computers are at 22, whatever 22 version it is uh, as of right now. I think it says at 22.1, I think. Uh, but we'll go ahead and walk through this step as well. So here's all the release notes, which I have read prior to it. I have already done details, uh, videos about what is new in 21.3. And then here is, uh, here's uh, information, you know, just a warning. You understand the potential risks. Once again, we haven't done anything since I pushed the last updates. So we're going to enter our password now. And now it's just going to update everything and move it up to Linux Mint 21.3. All right, so it says changes have been applied. So now we're going to download some more packages. So it's going to download new packages. We're basically going to have to go through this uh, multiple different times just to get it done. This upgrade from uh, 210 to 21.3 is fairly small, so this will not take too long. And it tells us the operating system was successfully updated, so we just need to reboot it. I can see that my icons down here have definitely changed in size. We'll reboot the system and then decide do I want to change any of those or something else. So let's go ahead and just reboot. And we have successfully reinstalled the system up to Linux Mint 21.3. This version, of course, has the flat packs can now be updated in the update manager. And uh, of course, um, there's of course, there's one. It's been what a whole hour and a half since we did anything with flat packs. So, you know, let's also have a look at the kernel information uh, since that did cause an issue before. So you can see all these are installed. Uh, nothing there. Nothing there nothing there and I think this one is active so I am going to mark for removal uh, all of these old ones here from the 515 branch I'm trying to think should I keep that last one no we're gonna we're gonna move that as well so we're gonna hit the remove kernels it's going to remove all of those and that way we will free up more space. And if I have any other issues with kernels, I can go in and add something else back in. Of course, it did change around my themes quite a bit. My old theme probably either wasn't supported or just didn't match anymore. That's okay. I'm just going to go back into my theme settings and make some different changes. This is a, a kind of a radically different version of... Um, of Linux Mint with this version here. So we'll just go ahead and have a look at what we, uh, what was the better one here. Do mixed, we'll do dark. Let's do orange mode. And that fixes everything else up looking kind of nice. So there we have it. So there is how to upgrade from the old end of life 20.3 all the way up to 21.3. I forget exactly how long 21.3 has support, but at least another year, another couple of years. So that is where we, uh, where we are from here. Thanks for watching and leave us any thoughts and uh, comments down below.